So I'm a crier. <laughs> so you know when Henrietta said some people will speak longer? It was probably me, <laughs> she knew. Um, so now that you've seen what Guardians of Hope is all about, um, I just for one moment want you to close your eyes and just imagine yourself seeing what I'm going to tell you right now. So close your eyes, everybody. Approximately 12 million girls. Think about it. 12 million girls. Envision that. Give birth every year worldwide. 12 million girls between the age of 15 and 19. 700,000 girls. Imagine that. Under 15 years of age give birth each year worldwide. In South Africa alone, in the last year, over 3,000 girls, and between the age of 10, 10 and 14, gave birth in the last year. Can you just imagine, put yourself in that place where all these babies are born, they're obviously born in devastating situations. Not all of them are loved situations. Imagine it's a home where there's abuse, drugs, alcohol. Can you imagine how many children and why we have so many children that are being abandoned, abused, sexually abused, hurt? You may now open your eyes. A study was done worldwide where they went to all the countries everywhere and they actually did a study to see when children die, young babies, where does it happen the most and what is the probability in what age space? Findings suggested that in South Africa, just think about it, in South Africa, the child is more likely to die in their first six days of life. First six days. That's what the foundings found. And it's not always, yes, it's premature babies as well, and it's all the, the valid reasons, but the biggest one that they found, murder. Murder. Abandonment. For every one child that we find alive that is abandoned, we at least find two to three dead that nobody tells their story, nobody knows about them. They are unknown. They didn't exist. They never were registered with home effects. Can you imagine that? Just, just for a moment, imagine that. So this is why Guardians of Hope, my heart, has always been to make a difference for children. So I was one of those very abused children. You know, back in the day, under the carpet, we're not allowed to know. So my heart has always been, and I was the mom for my siblings. So the, I've just always wanted to be a mom. And my prayer was, I want to have lots of children. You know, this rich husband, and I'm going to have lots of children. I'm going to be this mom. Um, that was my dream, and that was my heart. God knew my dream, and he knew my heart. And yes, he gave me only one biological child, but guess what? He still made me a mom of many. So I worked for Telcom for 18 years, and then when I moved to East London, I saw how extremely bad it is in the Eastern Cape. So in, when I was in Pretoria, I used to volunteer my time. And when I moved to East London, just, sure, I was broken um, when I just arrived here, and driving around and seeing all these little ones in the streets, um, I just decided, you know what, God, your will be done. You showed me I will one day have a home, and this is where it needs to be. So the role of Guardians of Hope, you've now already seen it. We take care of abandoned children, abused children, um, extreme sexual abused children. Um, the other day, we, that was about six months now, we received a little boy. Um, I was called to come out that this child is very abused and the neighbors called. And when I went to Danzani, this little boy was chained to a dark kennel, 18 months old, and he barked like a dog, and he ate like a dog, 
and he bit me. And I had to slowly, slowly move myself to the shop. <laughs> For two weeks, I had to be alone in a room with him because he was a dog. He bit. And the only one he could bit is me <laughs> because he can't bite the children. Um, that was so hard. And that is what we deal with every day. People just don't know because it's not advertised everywhere. And yes, I don't advertise it either because you know what? It's their story to tell one day. And he will get up and I know he's going to test his story and he's going to come back. He's going to come back. So what is great about the fact that there is a place like Guardians of Hope, can you imagine if this little boy just went to a parent, a mom and a dad? I don't believe he would have changed so fast into a child if it wasn't for the fact that he was amongst children. So yes, I did my role as in caring, but the children taught him to how to be a child. Isn't that just amazing? That the children that are there, without them even knowing, when they come back, I can tell them their stories. They made a difference. They mattered. Um, palliative care, of course, is hard. It is hard to lose a child. Um, so we currently have two little ones that are palliative, which means end of life. Um, in March the 14th, I lost my beautiful little boy, Tola, and 16th of April, my beautiful Bethany. <laughs> and it's hard. It's hard, but you know what? I will say yes again. I'll take them again. I'll do it again because they mattered. And the fact that I knew them and could hold them and pray and sing over them, <laughs> it's holy ground. If you have never had that opportunity to be with someone whilst they've passed, I don't think it's something that you could understand. It is so special. Um, it's holy ground. That's all I can say. It's holy ground. Um, and yes, I take it hard. And I get a lot of questions. Are you used to it by now? Why are you crying so much? It's not your child. They are. Every child that comes into our home is my child. I'm their mom. And my caregivers is mom. And I have lost my babies. We ensure that all their medical needs are met, the physical, the emotional, the mental. But the overload is, of course, the love. <laughs> we love love. Uh, the cuddles, um, the playing. Oh, it's just beautiful. I spend a lot of time at Free. <laughs> so we use Free for all our medical services. So I would say I spend at least 90% of my time at Free and CMH because of the horrific conditions of the children and how they come in. A lot of therapy is needed. Every Friday we get a speech therapist that comes to our home and does speech therapy. Sorry, I'm going through chemo, so my, I don't have spit in my mouth, so I'm going to drink a lot. Um, so we do speech therapy on Fridays, and my heart is just, you know what, when they leave, that I want to make sure that they're whole, and that I've done the best as a mom, like any beautiful mom would do for their children. We also make a little box where their first outfit is in, their first teddy bear is in there. When the umbilical cord falls off, I keep it and I put it in in the date. I make a book of the child and I tell these stories. When was your first laugh? When did your first toothy come? When did I cut your hair first? And I put a little lock of their hair in. You know, like a mommy would do. So one day when the child does go to forever a family, we give them the box. And then the box tells their story their likes, their dislikes. So I say my babies live with a handbook, definitely. <laughs> so not like by the hospital where you're on your own and you just leave. I, I at least advise you how to care for your child. Um, we also provide counseling services, as uh, you've seen, and that's not just related to babies. It's anything. I believe if we could get to the reasons why people are abusing their children, 
get rid of why are you using drugs? Why are you using alcohol? We definitely will see less and less children being hurt, less and less abandonments happening. Um, so mental health for me is a very big issue. And mental health is because of trauma. It's things that have happened to you. So we need to get to the root of what is it? Why are we doing these things? So counseling for us is very important so that we can prevent children being abandoned or abused by these parents. Um, and then, of course, we spread hope in the community. So if anything is donated to Guardians of Hope and there's something that we can't use because it's either too big, it doesn't fit in our age, or it's adult clothes, or it's an overload of socks, or anything that is too much, the heart is it was donated for a child in need. So there's no such thing as put it in storage. I don't like storage at all. My heart is there's a child out there that needs that outfit, that needs that sock. So nothing is kept for when we're going to need it. I trust God. He will provide again when we need it. But everything, so we make hope packs and we go out every week into the communities and we go help the communities, other NPOs, distribute hope packs so that these moms can just give them a little bit of hope so that they can do better for themselves, feel better, and also take care of their children. Um, so our vision is a loving home for every child. Now, as we know, a loving home, you can love your child but still hurt your child. If we say loving home, we're talking A to Z. A to Z must be there, and our mission is to care for vulnerable babies and help them find these loving families. So that's very important. So when a child gets matched to a family, either through fostering, adoption, or if we reunite children, the heart is that before this child leaves my care, I want to know that the parent knows how to care for the, for the baby. Who knows the child better than me? So I feel you have to go through training. So they have to at least spend three to six months at Guardians of Hope bonding with the child. Um, the baby doesn't remember the mom that left them in the dustbin, but that child remembers this one because they've grown with me. They've got an attachment to me. Some of them stay with me up to four to five years. I'm the only mom that they know. So when they leave, my heart is that they leave and not feel like, but I've lost my mom. So the heart is, bonding is very important. We then do day visits, goes over to weekend visits, it goes over to week visits before they leave, especially when they're older, so that that transition to their new family is not causing them any trauma. So bonding is very important. We teach them to cook, to bath, to play. Some moms can't read. We teach them, you open a book and you look at the picture and you make it up. They will go with whatever you say. So we have lots of fun while also doing that. So that for me is very, very important. Then in terms of our governance, as you would have seen in the past few months, um, there was a lot of things going on with Guardians of Hope needing to close. Social development went through a little stage. God bless them. Um, where they felt places of safety need to be closed. They only want the four CYCCs, which is your child and youth care centers. They only want those, and those are where the children can be there until they finish school. Our home is a short, it's temporary safe care, because the heart is the children need to go to families. They don't belong in the home. And before they get to a CYCC, where they need to be there until they're 18, my heart is, let's work hard. Social workers, let's work hard. Let's work these cases. So my children only have a three-month court order. So you can imagine the pressure on the social worker. We work like you don't understand. Good relationship happening. <laughs> um, and they work the children. And my children find homes. They go to forever families. And that is the heart, that they don't believe belong in a home forever. So in terms of governments, um, I showed them the, the Children's Act and I showed them the pieces within a CYCC. It says there, there is supposed to be a temporary safe care home. And Eastern Cape doesn't have that home. Ta-da! 
So I got my registration. So I have now been registered as a CYCC. No more closing me down. Um, but I'm still working in the mandate as temporary safe care. So children will find homes and they will not stay with me until they leave school. Na na, not happening. <laughs> Then in terms of how many babies, so we opened on the 1st of July in 2017 and we have cared for 193 babies. Now, can you imagine if it was just that I had to have these few until they leave school, it would have been 30 children until they leave school. It's 193 children that I have found home. So that is amazing. Um, so we currently have 25 children that we're caring for, 53 of our children have been adopted, 37 have gone into forever foster care, 68 have been reunited. Now when we reunite, it's usually not the mom or the dad, it's usually somebody within the family, lots of grannies, you know the grannies are the ones that say, oh no. This is my baby. So we've got lots of grannies, but I have had single dads say, that is my child, I'm taking my child. We dads have stepped up with the help of their moms, of course, and said, I will take care of that child. So that is just beautiful to see as well. So 68 have been reunited. Six children have gone to alternative care. Now that is your CYCCs, where they can be until they're 18. Reasons for that is, Sadly, we have some parents where who refuse for children to go into a foster care or be with Elaine because this child is going to bond with me. So the plan is rather send them to a CYCC where it's a hundred plus children, where one day if I change my mind, I'll come back. So six of my children is one day. If I change my mind, I'll come back. And sadly, the law protects the parents and therefore they are in a children's home. Um, all six of them are already over the age of seven. So it's quite sad. And then I've got my four deceased little ones. The challenges, fundraising. I think that is the top thing for any nonprofit organization. Fundraising is very hard. It's not easy to fundraise. We've also noticed that there's definitely donor fatigue. I think there's just so many and everybody wants to help everywhere, but how do you choose? And I, I think people are finding it difficult and everybody, there's only a certain, East London is tiny. So we all are going to the same people and I think they are so tired of us. <laughs> So fundraising is a very, very difficult one. Um, and our medical expenses where Frey does not cover certain medical things. Um, there's one baby in our home that her, med her medication is over 8,000 a month just for medicine and we can't get it from Frey. And I need to make a plan and I need to fundraise to get that money. And as you have heard, we are not getting any money from social development. It's all community funded. So it's it's people. Kies and Lieva, thank you so much, Kies and Lieva. And, and, and I use the 2,000 that I get a month from Kies and Lieva towards that baby's medication. She deserves to live. She deserves her medication. So thank you so much for your contribution. Um, having to say no. So currently we have the capacity and legally can have 30 children, but I can only do 25. Because if I take that extra five children, I need an extra two caregivers. We just can't afford it. We just cannot. My salaries a month, just my staff salaries, is over 160,000 a month currently that I need to fundraise. And that's a lot. And that is because it's 24-hour service. When babies are in hospital, which is all the time, I have to have a mommy at hospital. If I'm not that mom, it's a staff. And it's a tw it's, they stay there until that baby leaves and I need to pay her for every hour at double rate. So she gets almost 80 rand an hour just to sit there and be with the baby until the baby can come home. So you can just imagine your cost. If you have children and you know you're one, you're two, you're three, 
what your cost is, imagine 25 children. So if, I would love to be in a place where we can do our city. It's hard to say no when I know I, I can, but I can't. My, my heart is really struggling with that. And not having a safe abandoning process. So about four months ago, we went into, if you know where Guardians of Hope is, we in 52 Belgravia Crescent, where the old child welfare used to be. And there's this big field on the side. So my heart is, we're trying to keep it clean. So that, and it's so lovely since we're there, the whole street have just changed. They've all have started fixing their homes and it's looking good in our street. I must say, the other day, the photographer came in, the plumber, he came in and he said to me, I can't believe I'm in Southernwood. And I'm like, yes, yeah, come in. <laughs> and it was so nice to hear that he felt safe. And it is safe. Um, so uh, that everybody's going, so we cleaned this piece of field. And oh, I think we were about a group of 40 people. And in there, we found over 50 fetuses in that field. Why? The university campuses are all around Southernwood. So obviously they're doing backstreet abortions and they need to get rid of these babies somewhere, right? So they go in there and they go throw them away because nobody goes in that piece of the bush. Nobody goes in there. Um, that was very hard for me to see, to find. And I then decided, you know what? I want a baby saver. You know, there were a hole in the wall and a box and you open, you put your baby in, you close. So that was the heart. And I did it in faith and I said, God, you said do this and I did it. But now I've got it, but I'm not allowed to use it. <laughs> so social development is saying, no, we cannot have a baby saver. And the reason for that is they say, we're taking away the child's name, we're taking away their culture and the right of the dad. So there's currently a court case against social development. The Baby Saver South Africa is taking them to court because guess what? Some of the babies we found you could see was alive. They full birthed, not just pieces or little. They had eaten away. Um, where is, and even if we find them alive, what's their name? What's their culture? Where's the dad? So the, the explanation from them as to why no is hard for us. So we're not going to accept that and we're trusting the Lord and we're praying over social development. Please pray with us, Holy Spirit. Just work with their hearts. Then I want to share some good news, some nice things too. So um, the projects that we've been working on. So as you've, a lot of you have come to our coffee shops, we, we used to have the coffee shops when we in, were still in Bonnie Dune. Um, sadly, the home that we have now, um, it didn't have a roof, it doesn't have a place. So when we had our, co our few coffee shops, either it rains out or it's cold or... And then now we've got all these toddlers. There's 12 toddlers running around and it's raining and they're stuck in a little room like yay by yay. Um, so you can change. Um, so we now have a roof. So the plan is, so our roof is up um, and we've been praying for this roof. I think Altia will know from the first coffee shop because we had a tent and it was flopping like this and everybody was holding a bowl and it was crazy that day. Um, and we just, please Lord. And it, it was an expensive project, but just how, how God just works. When I just like, oh, never mind. There's other things to worry about. CBN somehow got heard of me and they called me and they said, what is your biggest need? If you could fix something right now in your home, what would it be? And I said, the roof. Just get me that roof. So CBN came and they paid and they did the roof for us. How amazing is that? And not only did they do the roof, they took our, off our asbestos from our actual roof and they put in solar power because when they came from overseas to come see the home, we had load shedding and I had to quickly phone the ambulance to come give my baby oxygen because the machine didn't work. So, and they were there and they're like, nah, that's not happening again. And they gave us solar. Thank you, Lord. That's just the Lord that does that. 
So then the next one is the baby saver. It's there. Please pray with us so that that's what the box looks like. So the baby will go in. It's got a, you'll see it's in a little slant. As soon as the baby is in, it, t- it touches a little trigger. And this trigger then sends the message. Then it phones my phone. It phones CPF. It phones the ambulance services. It phones Red Alert. And there's a big camera system with this red light in the baby room. Um, that will also then signal and go off as a siren to say that there's a baby. So there's no way we would be able to traffic a child, steal a child. And then in the inside, this tiny little camera, and that's where Red Alert comes into play. When a baby goes in, I've asked that it needs to make a recording of the baby inside. So the mom will still stay anonymous, but the baby... We need to see if that baby's alive or not. I never want anybody to come and say a baby died because I took too long or anything like that. So the baby will be in there. We'll be there. We'll wait for it, alert the medics. They will come in. We'll keep the baby comfortable, but they will in the camera a yes or a no so that it can be on record so that every child is accounted for. There can be no child trafficking, number one. If social development is on the list, they also get a call. And then also just to protect guardians of hope in terms of it's not because of us, but the child was already placed. Um, you know, especially at the universities, uh, I'm a little scared of, of putting in dead babies, especially if we found so many. Then, um, so you saw in the clip, we had the little classroom. The classroom and the playroom as you saw in the video, was one room. Now, it didn't do so great because you've already got traumatized children and now you want to try and educate, but they want the toy and they want the dolly and they want the car. How do you say no? They're already so traumatized, so you give in. So we played more than educated. So I decided no. And once again, it was a prayer thing. It was like, Lord, you know, I'm not very (laughs) hectic on social media. Uh, I'm shy. So being up here for me is a big thing. I'm very shy, but I also know that this is the Lord that's preparing me. Um, I don't like doing things like this. I like people doing it for me, and I'll be in the background doing the work. (laughs) So that's what I usually like. Um, And I was like, Lord... I'm so tired of fundraising. I don't know what ideas to do anymore, but we need a school. We really need a school. And this gentleman came and he visited the home for his from Renew Energy. And he came in and I took him to the classroom. It was class time. And one of our little ones, Tina, she's my feisty one. She's my boss. She was sitting with a book. And as she was sitting with a book, she was drawing inside the book. And then when he looked at her and said, why are you doing that? She looked at him and she ripped out the page. He didn't like it. Okay, because this man is hectic about education. That's his passion, his education. And then that Monday, they delivered the classroom. He didn't even tell me (laughs) it's happening. They delivered the classroom, and it's beautiful. I mean, just look at it. So now we've got a playroom, and we've got a classroom. So education can now happen for real, because there's no toys in there. They can only do educational stuff. And when they're in the playroom, we can really just play. So that is so nice. And also what makes this nice is when they come do the play therapy, they can be separate from the other children. So it's, it's just opening so many doors. And remember... People can take everything from you, but never what you, your education is. Nobody can take that away, and they deserve a good start. So we, I'm very, very passionate about education. Then Nathan, you know Nathan that goes around and does all these murals? He came and did the mural, the one that shows to the street. He did that mural for us. And you will see the little boy is Johnny. So I adopted Johnny, so he's got his, the one with the hearing aids on that side. And then the little girl is Lindo. So she's one of our children at the home that for me will forever stay with me, the devastation and the hurt that this child went through. Um, so I've decided, because Johnny is also a very, very, very sad story, but 
ending of amazing. Those are another day stories that I can tell you. <laughs> so I decided to put them on there so that when they come back, that they know the inspiration that they are for others. And then hopefully they'll also be good, you know, and they'll come back and she'll see her little face and she'll know she was loved and she will know her story and she's there forever. You know, so I will forever keep Lindor in my heart. So this is lovely. And we're busy registering it as an ECD. The next is our vegetable garden. Um, so my heart's like this. And you know, in Southernwood, and I feel that is where God wanted me. But it's hard doing a lot of things. So I give to other NPOs and they go and they do what they do. I do the babies. I, I do the caring. I'm a mom. I just want to be the mom. Um, I'll do that. But so the knock on the door and I see these women and men and they're thin, um, begging for food. And what do you, I, so it's a, it's a bread or it's a packet of five two minute noodles, um, you know, things like that, not healthy things. And I just big pray. And then I get this call from Schneeleka. Um, Joan's son-in-law, just out of nowhere. And he says, Elaine, you know what? We want to do something, but it has to be something to do with garden. So let me tell you what I want to do. And I told him, and guess what? We've got this beautiful vegetable garden. So my heart was so that I can take them into the garden and it's right next door to the house. I don't need to leave. I can quickly go do that. They help us work in the garden. They help us clean it up nicely. Um, we teach them the skill of how this garden was made. And we've got one that is not even under the, 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 sh the shading, which is also growing beautifully. And then they can actually enable themselves and go do it at home. Isn't that awesome? And I feel better as the mom that I'm sending them with a bag of vegetables at the end of the day and not just a bread. So the mommy in me feels better. So that's the mom. Always the mom. <laughs> How can you help? Join the Club 1000 for us to run optimally and be able to pay for everything that needs to be paid. We need a thousand people to donate 150 Rand a month. So when you look at the back, there is a leaflet there. My card is also there. If you look at the back, there's a QR code. Please, if it's in your heart and you feel that you can make a difference and you are willing to give up four cups of coffee or a burger a month, um, please, please, we need your help. You know, the saying goes that it takes a village to raise a child. Please form part of our village. We need you. Um, you can do once-off donations. If you feel you just want to want to help once, you are welcome to do that because your one donation will make a huge difference. Uh, become a COT sponsor. So that is where you, you choose to care for a child and you pay towards that child's COT or bed. So that is 5,000 a month. Um, corporate companies like doing that. Um, and some of the richer families, there's one, one family that does that, and they get their tax exam certificate. Even for your 150 rand that you give a month, you can get a tax exam certificate, so you would be able to hand it in when it's time for your, your tax time, and you'll get at least 70% of that money back. So it's a win-win. So the companies like this one. Um, however, we sadly only have four. And we need more. I mean, there's, there's 25 children. Can you imagine if I could get 30? So if you have the ability, please, if you could, and, and promote it, tell your company about it. Um, share the course. A lot of people don't even know that we exist. Um, we had a meeting now the other day, and there was a minute, like, we didn't know you exist. Like, what do you do? And I'm surprised. You're like, hmm, my marketing must not be so great but I'll fix it. It's okay. Leave a legacy gift. Um, how awesome. And that's something that people don't, don't like to talk about, but we're all going to go one day. Why not leave a legacy gift and there's something left and you give towards the home and that's your gift and your forever gift 
to keep your legacy going. How amazing is that? That's special. And then come visit. Um, we've got a lot of children running around. And you know, in the first thousand days of a child's life, touch. I can give them the food. I can give them everything. But they need love. Lots and lots of love, especially the children that have been traumatized. We would love to have you volunteer with us. Um, come spend some time. And you know what? Come visit the home. And if caring is not your thing, I can promise you there's something there that you would be able to do. Help us cook food. Help us do the washing. Sure, 12 bundles of washing a day. Hmm. Very nice. <laughs> My cooking that I do, I have to cook at night when everybody's in bed. So I start nine o'clock at night and then I have to cook until one, two o'clock in the morning. How amazing would it be to take some of these vegetables home and just go cook for us? So I want to ask, please come visit us. We need you. Become part of our village. Um, it's our children and God has called us to look after his orphans. And I would love to see you all join us, not just now for today, but please come be part of our family. Thank you so much for your time.